Okay, we know that control voltage is voltage that is applied to various functions. Sample and hold is merely a function of voltage, and here's how. Sample and hold is a component which takes samples from a voltage, which is it looks at a voltage and identi it looks at a voltage at certain points and records what the voltage is at those points. Now, if the voltage is a steady voltage, of course, every time it samples the voltage, it would come back with the same level of voltage. However, if there are variations in the voltage, each time it samples, it's likely to have a different amount of voltage. So, what usually happens is the sample and hold unit is fed noise, which is all kinds of voltages all at once. So, when it takes a sample, it gets a different random voltage every time. And then that voltage is applied as a control to, for example, the, um, the pitch of an oscillator or the filter cutoff point of a filter. It's a noise you all recognize, and it's a noise we've even used in uh, various examples. But here, we'll listen to it once again. Here is a sample and hold effect. Each one of those notes you're hearing is a point at which this component sampled a noise source, got a voltage from the no noise source, and then sent that voltage to the frequency of the oscillator. So with each sampling, it got a different voltage and told the oscillator to play a different note. So that's what you're hearing. And of course, we can direct this control voltage, these little points of control voltage, to the filter to get this sound. Which we all know and love. Now we're so used to hearing the sample and hold sample noise and give those totally random values. But sample and hold is not limited to merely sampling using noise as a voltage source. And I've come up with an example for that. Um, over here on the Moger Foger CP251, I have a triangle wave output from the LFO. This is a control voltage output of a triangle wave. I'm going to connect it to the input of the sample and hold. Now, the sample and hold is sampling a triangle waveform, a repeating triangle waveform. So, if uh, every time it checks the voltage that's coming out of this LFO, it's going to be getting that voltage from some point on a triangle waveform. And here's what it sounds like. Let's adjust it so we're shooting at the pitch again. And I hope what you're doing while you listen is recognizing that the sound that you're hearing is making the shape of a triangle. It goes down, it goes up to a high point, then it goes back down, it goes back up to a high point. It's kind of a sine wave thing, but in this case, it's a triangle wave. So what's happening is the sampling is taking place at points close together enough uh, to actually show you the shape of the voltage that's going in, which is that triangle, that sine wave-like triangle. Now, if we speed it up, the points that the, the sample and hold takes a sample become too slow to catch the waveform and it starts sounding random again. There's still, it still doesn't sound completely random. But mathematically what's happening is it's taking samples at different points and the waveform is going faster than the sampling speed. Then we get to a point where it does sound random again. Oh, actually it doesn't. But that's, what, that's, the, that's the fun that you can have with sample and hold. It is a control voltage that can be applied to really any portion of anything that can be con uh, voltage controlled can be controlled by the sample and hold. Um, you can input any sort of voltage into it to be sampled 
human voice, uh, you know, outputs from other modules, anything, and it will sample. And you can get it to do neat things like that, where you're sampling a waveform where the sampling actually shows the shape of the waveform. And that's how the uh, whatever component is plugged into the sample and hold is affected. Thank <laughs> you.